And we're back. And now it's time for Meg de. <laughs> It's funny whenever anybody ever does the duh thing, because it was, was it naked? Was it a naked gun part duh? I think that was where the, that all began. Uh, no, I think it was naked gun two and a half. No, there is a naked gun two and a half, but that's the, that's the third one. Isn't no, it? no. It, oh, no, no, no. It was hot shots. It was Hot Shots Part, part Duh. duh. Yeah. Well done. That's right. And it was Naked Gun, then Naked Gun Two and a Half, then Naked Gun. And this is the best one. Brilliant. 33 and a third. Fantastic. Just for the record. <laughs> I th was it number two that was uh, The Smell of Fear? <laughs> yes, I think that's right. But just for the record, that's it. Okay. So, Excellent. Uh, Meg Two, The Trench, which is the sequel to The Meg, based on uh, the series of Meg novels. This is based on the sequel, although very, very loosely. Incidentally, in the series of Meg novels, they are... Meg Primal Waters, Meg Hell's Aquarium, and the forthcoming Meg Purgatory. So there isn't a Meg Richardson. Very good. Or indeed a Meg Ryan. No. <laughs> so this is the, the, the big news this was it was it's directed by Ben Wheatley. And I I I'm I'm a fan of Ben Wheatley's films. And Ben Wheatley started his career with sort of viral comedies. And then he graduated to low budget works like Down Terrace and Kill List and Sightseers and Field in England. He did High Rise, which I thought was a really kind of ambitious adaptation of that. Free Fire, which I loved. And then the Netflix Rebecca remake. Most recently, he made that eco-horror in the earth, which they made during lockdown, which I thought was terrific. And when he said that, I said, what are you doing next? He said, I'm doing the Meg 2. I went, I'm sorry. He said, I'm doing Meg 2 with Jason State. <laughs> Pardon me. Um, and it, of course, you know, it sort of actually makes sense when you know Ben Wheatley's sensibility. But so this open 65 million years ago there's a food chain there's bugs and then a bug's eaten by a bigger creature and then a bug's eaten by a dinosaur and then rah, so it's it sets itself up as jurassic shock okay boom thank you i was very proud of that joke so now five years after the original meg uh aka jason statham shark puncher so jonas he's been fighting eco crimes he's helping to explore the mariana trench while serving as a single parent to his daughter Mei, who with help from their uncle who is played by wu jing who's a chinese martial arts star um they've been training a baby meg to respond to their commands although jason thinks you can't train a meg a meg is just a meg you know you can't it's, whatever it is oh my god it's megalodon and it, it proves right when the meg gets out into the into the it goes to the trench and then other mags are in, megs are in the trench and they are protected by the thermal barrier which stops them coming out of the trench but there are people doing illegal mining in the trench and there's an explosion thingy which breaks the thermal barrier and so megs get out of the trench and there's a, there's a whole lot of kind of Edgar Rice Burroughs stuff. So Jules Verne, it's, I mean, this is clearly made by somebody who grew up loving Land That Time Forgot, 20,000 Leagues Under the Sea. Mothra, of course, you know, Ben Wheat is a big fan of Mothra. And actually, in many ways, Meg to the Trench is a sort of modern version of Mothra. It's also clearly made by somebody who, because he's kind of the same age as me. Do you remember action comics in the 1970s yeah. with Hook, which we, we, we always get them taken off you at school. <laughs> you, you can't have that. It was disgraceful. And there are Thunderbirds gags in uh, Meg as well. And I say this to somebody who has a Thunderbird puppet of themselves. The set pieces, which like this underwater thing when they're in this one place and they have to get to this other place and they have to walk in these suits and but there's all this sort of magical stuff going on. There are set pieces involving the Staith on a jet ski. And a lot of it is apparently the Staith on a jet ski with a pointy stick fighting monsters that are like the size of a house. And you go, but it's a pointy stick with a thing on the end of it. How's that going to work? It's okay, because he's the Staith. And then it all leads to a place called Fun Island. Fun Island is entirely populated by a bunch of people who... You know, they just look like bait. That's what they're there for. And then all this stuff is happening. So film wasn't widely pressed. And I saw it a while ago because Ben Wheatley came on MK3D, you know, the show that I do at the BFI. And I saw it in the morning and I came out of it and I said, well, that was absolutely mad. And uh, and I had enjoyed it. And then, of course, the, the, there have been a few, you know, the critics have been very, very sniffy about it. The box office, however, has been very, very good. I mean, worldwide, it is currently number one in the box office. Why? Well, the reason is very simple. It may not be a critics film, but it's much more fun than it had any right to be. Firstly, the problem with the with the first film, the first film was too well behaved to be really entertaining. Like it sounded like it was a great idea, but it was kind of PG-13 and it didn't have the gore or the bite that it needed to have. So it was like, the, the, you know... After that trailer, oh my God, it's Megalodon. And you go to the film, oh yeah, okay, that's... So Meg 2 
because they still can't have any more gore because it still has to be the same sort of family rating, what they've done is cranked up the madness. So it starts in kind of, okay, fine. Yeah, this is like a bit more Meg and, you know, I understand that thing. And then the second act picks up the pace. There's the underwater sequence in the trench, you know, and it, it could have been out in space. So that's good. And then the third act goes absolutely loop-de-loo, la-la, what on earth is going on? And it everything Everything is thrown at the screen. There's more Megs. There's more monsters. There's more whirly copters fighting giant, big tentacular things that get cut. In. And there's one moment when literally a huge, big tentacle and a whirly copter thing goes around and the tentacle comes flying over. And I'm thinking, this is insane. This is absolutely... You know, and the best thing about it is that it's paced in a way that kind of goes, you know, boom, 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 boom. And the whole film has got this kind of headlong rush to it that I, I really enjoyed myself. I mean, there are, okay, on one level, it's a, it's a sort of, you know, a well-made version of Sharknado or Shark Exorcist. I mean, it's that level of sort of, you know, foolishness. But I think that what Ben Wheatley has done is to understand that, understand what it is, that it is, it is a fun, ridiculous romp. And the way in which it's paced and the fact that he, I think he loves the same things that I love. I mean, there is an awful lot of those you know, you keep expecting to see Doug McClure turn up. Or, and But I, I wrote down a bunch of lines from the movie, which kind of, which delighted me. Okay, so here are some of the, the, the dialogue highlights. Statham, it's a deviated septum, which is fantastic. Half my team is dead and I'm not going to lose the other half. I've slightly had to, um, uh, uh, this, this sure is some dumbass spit. <laughs> Followed by, that was some unfortunate spit back there. And one of my favourites, this feels unpleasantly familiar. <laughs> Another later on, I still think we look like food. <laughs> and the standout, he ate the whole boat. <laughs> he ate the whole boat. The whole boat. Brilliant. Honestly, I, I grinned all the way through it. And I, I thought that the thing that was really... Smart band. Like I said, I've seen the reviews, and I, 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 some of the reviews have been um, like really, really, really stinky. Uh, I mean, most of the reviews have been really, really stinky. I really enjoyed it, and I know that what everyone says is they say, "Well, you really love it because you love Ben Wheatley." I love Ben Wheatley because he's the kind of guy who can take Meg to the trench. It's a deviated septum, and make a movie that kicked me out at eleven o'clock on a you know Thursday morning with a smile on my face from ear to ear. I mean, it's you know, I've, I've read some of the reviews, and it, uh, there were some that debated whether this it this wasn't a film that was so bad it was good. It was so, it was so bad it was bad. No, but also that's not right. Sometimes I think you just need silly, yeah, and it releases a certain amount of tension because yeah. you just go, it's just silly, it's, and it's supposed to be silly, and that's absolutely fine. Does it fall into that category? Yeah, and he knows exactly what he's doing, and you know. He's, yeah, I think it's a film that knows what it's doing and is enjoying doing it. I think in any film where you've got, you know, the state who's effectively saying, just hand me the pointy stick. Yeah, I'm going to go out on a jet just ski. Just the pointy stick. And I know that the thing is enormous, but I'm going to stick the pointy stick in the can, end of the thing. I'm going to free dive to the bottom of the trench. <laughs> With my deviated With septum. With my deviated <laughs> septum. Um, we have a bit of uh, uh, correspondence that's come in. Okay, uh, go. It says, Dear Rosie and Jim, Are chugging we, uh, along on the old rag doll. Okay. LTL and FTE, always been happy to listen from the periphery rather than send in my opinions. However, it took a recent viewing of Meg 2, The Trench, to air my views. While Watching M2TT, belief was firmly suspended on numerous occasions. I have never facepalmed during a film till this, but once that seal was broken, the well was returned to numerous times. <laughs> From gaping plot holes with oxygen reserves and underwater atmospheric pressure to special reference to the whole deviated septum diving <laughs> scene. The film feels it is set in an alternative reality where really and WTF reactions are par for the course. Yes. The second half of the film desperately steals plot elements from Avatar Piranha and even looks to go full-on Godzilla at one point to keep the action going. And Mothra. I would say I had enjoyed the film but don't know what I feel as I left the cinema dumbstruck. David, uh, 465 ranked Magic of the Gathering player UK Magic the Gathering. Magic the Gathering. Magic, Magic the Gathering. Sanj, welcome to the family. Magic the Gathering. Big, Magic part the of gathering. Our, big part of our household. I love that. I say I enjoyed it, but I don't know what on earth I felt. I came out WTF. That, I think, is exactly right. And, and can I just reassure you, you did enjoy it. You, with all that face palming 
what the actual, yeah. It's, it's good, fun. Good face palming. It's fun. Good face palming. Good but face just don't palming. deviate your septum. Yeah, I mean, point, you do it, you can do it like that. Pointy stick. <laughs> uh, that's Meg too. Um, of course, send your correspondence in as you get to see it over the coming weeks. Thanks very much for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed watching it as much as we enjoyed making it. While you're here, check out all the other videos because they're cool too, aren't they? They are. And if you want to keep up to date with everything Kermit and Mayo's take, then check out our social channels. I mean, why wouldn't you? I mean, I, I would. They, I have done. Excellent.